All right, everyone, Cody here, and welcome to the hopefully final episode of my making heavy water endeavor. So I've got here the water, which we had confirmed is slightly heavier than normal. I'm going to go ahead and drop in a little bit of sulfuric acid because it needs to be electrolytically conductive again. I'd say just like three or four drops is all I'm going to put in. Let's wash that down. And I have made this little thing. It's a little electrolytic cell. See, I've got these uh, lead stick stuck in the bottom of this plastic tube. I'm going to go ahead and transfer the fluid from this into this and then I'm just going to use a very small little battery charger to electrolyze it. And we'll do it very slowly. And I'm going to have this stuck onto here and inside this jar I'm going to place this piece of catalytic converter. The thing is, is the hydrogen and oxygen when it comes in contact with this catalytic converter will actually react to form water. Uh, in, in theory, I have tested this. I have stuck this into a thing of hydrogen and oxygen, and it does warm up, so I definitely know it's reacting. So the gas coming off of this is going to contain maybe a hundred times more than normal, so I definitely want to capture it. Anyway, let's uh, get going, and I'm going to do this, and uh, hopefully I'll see you back when I got this concentrated down to less than a milliliter. Okay, after another several days, we've got it down quite far. Look at this. It is much lower. It used to be way up there, right? And if you look inside of this jar, you can see my catalyst up there. But it's actually, the sides of it look a bit wet. And I've seen some drops coming down. And if I shake the jar a little bit, you can see that I've definitely got a little bit of water in there. Now hopefully that's just not water that's evaporated out and gone around. I don't think it is because this is quite large and anything that's up here just uh, drip back down. So I say we extract that and try to distill it again. <laughs> so basically the same setup as last time, just on a little bit smaller scale. Alright, so I've had to heat this plastic up a little bit to get the water to go all the way to this end. And uh, I think we're good. Let's see how much I collected. That's it right there. A little bit left in this tube I'm just gonna kind of bang down that's all that I've got left go ahead and take this out I'm gonna go ahead and run a rag through this and dry it maybe I'll save the rag let's uh, go ahead and put this in the pipette and see how much I've got that's not very much so it looks like I got just about a little over half a milliliter here it's taken me about two months and I've gone through over three liters of water of course, if you count the fact that I used to started with the batteries, then it's taken me years, and I started with well over a gallon. Let's go ahead and get a taste of this, mostly to see if it's salty or not, because if it's still salty, that means I've got to redistill re it, and redistilling this could be difficult, and I think I lost a good part of it just distilling it this last time. Hopefully it's not salty, and also, heavy water is supposed to taste slightly sweet, so let's go ahead and get a taste of that. Well, it's not salty, and it does taste a little bit sweet, which is interesting. It's possibly it's just my imagination, but at any rate, it's not salty, so I don't have to redistill it. And so we can go ahead and go do some uh, freeze tests. Okay, so I have a beaker with a snow water mix here. Now this uh, should be at exactly 32 degrees Fahrenheit, since the snow is currently in the process of melting. You know, I've got energy going into the system, so it's no longer freezing. But I got this vial here, which should have a higher melting point. If I put this in there at 32 degrees, and if this has a higher melting point, say 34 degrees, then it should freeze even though this is melting. Now I took the liberty of actually freezing it partially, so there's a little piece of ice in there. That should get rid of any uh, super cooling effects due to it being nearly pure water. Let's go ahead and plunge it in there. Now it could take a few minutes, so I'll go ahead and let that cool off. And we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Let's see what we got. That looks like solid to me. Let's dry it off so we can see it. Oh yes, look at that. That is definitive. I mean the only thing you could do to water make it freeze at a higher temperature like this is to make it heavy. Well, I guess I guess it's time for me to melt it again and get me a little ice cube out and see if it sinks in pure water. There we go. OK. 
Okay, so there's the frozen water right there. Let's see if I can break that off without losing it. And I just did. Alright, so there's half the frozen water drop. Go ahead and drop it in the water and see what it does. Oh my gosh, it sinks. Can you see it? Oh, there you go. Here, I've got one more. Let's uh, turn it so that that stupid white thing is not in the back. Let's drop it in. Oh, there it goes. And it sank. Let's see if I can reach in there and pick it back out of there. It's holding together in the ice water. You notice I got an ice cube in there just to keep the water cold. And it sinks. Oh my gosh! I have heavy water. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's get those out of there. That way we can take them and put them back in the vial. I don't think I contaminated it that much. You know what? Since I got this drop out still, and it's probably contaminated slightly, I, there's an experiment I've always wanted to try. Let's go ahead and suck this up. I wanna, you know how when you add salt, salty water to fresh water, it kind of has that shimmer in the water because of the difference in diffraction due to the different densities? I've always wanted to see if heavy water would do the same thing. So let's go ahead and put a drop in the top of this water, see what it looks like as it goes through. Oh, you can see it. See that little halo? Oh my gosh. Let's try that again. Oh uh, yeah, it mixes pretty quick though. I get in closer. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Now I've mixed in my almost my whole drop. <laughs> oh man, that that was totally worth it though. That was cool. I come into the greenhouse mostly because there's no wind. Here we go. I have heavy water. This awesome? I mean, I think I might be the first person to actually do this type of experiment in a long time. Certainly the only one to have it on YouTube. I mean, you've got uh, industrial processes, but this is the first time I've seen it done on a small scale. This isn't much, and I've got even less since I used it up to test with, but this should be enough for me to run a fuser, for a while at least. Uh, I actually have a fuser grid that I made a while ago. You know, this little guy. I had it, it uh, was running off the power from a television set. And you know, it'd actually work. It'd, uh, it'd uh, make the uh, glowing discharge and stuff, but I didn't have any deuterium at the time, so there's no way I could get it to work. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a new one of these, and get me a fusion reactor going pretty soon. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I will be making more heavy water. I've got a little thing going right here. It's just a test for now. This is uh, this is actually what I dumped that uh, little beaker into. This is some uh, concentrated potassium chloride salt, a little bit of sodium salt, as well as some uh, potassium dichromate. That's why it's yellow. The potassium dichromate acts as a catalyst in the electrochemical reaction to produce potassium chlorate. So, you know, I've been using a little bit of potassium chlorate for my flash powder, so I figure I may as well make some on my own, right? Since this reaction uses electrolysis and releases hydrogen, it will concentrate the heavy water as well. You know, two for one, right? Yeah, I just got this hooked up to a little tiny solar panel right now, so it's going to take a long time for it to actually boil down, but I can leave it hooked up forever, basically. Yeah, this is just a test for now. Well, if I scale up and I'm making like pounds of potassium chloride, I may as well make a little bit of heavy water at the same time, right? So there's that. I might even eventually make a series where I use the same, you know, use the girder sulfide process, the same one that they use commercially to produce heavy water if I decide I want a bunch of it. Although it'll be a while before I decide to work with the uh, hydrogen sulfide, because that stuff's toxic. Let's talk about the uh, heavy oxygen component. You see, if you use the uh, Gerger sulfide process, you get her down to about 20% uh, heavy water, and that's just the heavy hydrogens. You're not actually concentrating the heavy oxygens there. And then electrolysis or actually uh, fractional distillation to get the rest of the way, that's not going to concentrate oxygen. So 
commercial heavy water is not going to contain heavy oxygen. Uh, electrolysis will concentrate the oxygen, but only a little bit. It's like a 10% more in the, in the water than in the gas that comes off. So I don't think I got it concentrated very much. It's probably made up for the fact that this is probably not 100% pure heavy water though. That's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this little series. Please give me feedback if you can. Subscribe and I'll see you next time.